the pole vault by John Jacobs. Poles were first used to cross rivers and canals. Today, the pole vault is a track and field jumping event. Athletes use fiberglass or carbon fiber poles to clear a bar as high as possible. I hope you enjoy. In the pole vault, an athlete uses kinetic energy in a horizontal direction, which is the approach, then uses the plant to convert the kinetic energy to elastic potential energy, which is stored in the pole. During this phase where the energy is stored in the pole, the pole vaulter will drive and swing up. Then the pole, which acts like a spring, will release its energy into vertical kinetic energy and the pole vaulter will invert and fly away, followed by clearance. Then gravity will take over and free fall occurs. First, in the pole vault, the athlete must overcome static friction, which is what keeps an object from moving the athlete must then accelerate down the runway, which is equal to B final, the velocity of the final speed over the velocity of the initial over time. The athlete's average speed would be the total distance over the total time of so many attempts or so many jumps. The elapsed time is the total time it takes to vault from the very beginning the very end. The frame of reference is how you look at the vault. For example, if you look close, the vaulter will appear to run faster and jump higher. If you look from far away, the vaulter will appear to run slower and jump lower, however it's the same. An athlete's instantaneous speed is the athlete's speed at any given moment in the vault. A rate would be the number of times an athlete's foot or feet hit the ground in so much time. The speed is how fast an athlete can cover a distance in blank time. An athlete's velocity is a speed with direction. For example, 2.5 meters per second to the left is a velocity. The normal force reacts on the athlete when he or she is on the ground. It is the opposite of gravity. Newton's first law. This is the law of inertia. An athlete will continue on his or her current path until acted on by an outside force. Newton's second law, which is force equals mass times acceleration, means the athlete must achieve a certain force or acceleration to bend a pole. Newton's third law, action-reaction, is basically summed up in the plant phase of the pole vault. The action force is the force the athlete exerts on the pole. The reaction force is the force the pole reacts to back on the athlete. The law of conservation of momentum. In the video, the athlete appears to move slower after pole impact, but the momentum is still the same. It is just stored in the pole's energy. This is how the pole can act like a spring, returning its energy back to the athlete. Sliding friction is the friction generated as the athlete slides the tip of the pole to the back of the box. The fluid friction is air resistance the vaulter must overcome for more height. Gravity is another force the vaulter must overcome to achieve the maximum height. Gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Momentum is mass times velocity, basically a force with direction. A projectile is basically the pole vaulter because the athlete is moving forward, but also in the up or down direction. 
Mass is how much stuff something has. The more stuff, the greater the gravitational pull on other masses. A component is two values, one of horizontal quantity and the other of vertical quantity. The resolution is your process to finding the resultant. The resultant is the finished location, or the answer to the two components. Physics. This is the total study of motion in day-to-day -day activities. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.